Hello, everyone. I'm Zihao Yang from Peking University and the High Altitude Observatory. Today, I'm going to talk about mapping the global magnetic field in the solar corona using the magnetoseismology method. We know that the sun is a magnetic magnetized star, and its magnetic field plays a critical role in shaping the atmosphere. The Due to the magnetic coupling between the different atmospheric layers, the information on the magnetic field of the entire solar atmosphere is required to understand many physical processes such as the corona heating problem and the solar eruption mechanisms. Up to now, we can only have routine measurements of the solar magnetic field in the photosphere using the Zeeman effect. However, measurements of the magnetic field in the upper layers, especially the corona, are extremely difficult. So far, we still do not have a precise knowledge of the corona magnetic field. Apparently, the difficulty of the corona magnetic field measurements significantly impedes our um, understanding of the solar, solar magnetism and also its interaction to, with the uh, solar plasma. So we still need to work hard to think about how to measure the corona magnetic field. In the past two to three decades, a technique called corona seismology or magnetoseismology has been widely used for corona magnetic field measurements. This method makes use of amateur D oscillations of waves that are observed in the corona loops or coro coro other corona structures. From the amateur theory, the observed wave parameters can be used to infer the average magnitude of the magnetic field in the oscillating structures. However, like the one in the left, this is uh, the observed waves triggered by a flyer. These waves or oscillations are only occasionally observed and will decay very soon. In addition, the inferred magnetic field strength is usually just a single single value, often around 10 Gauss. Obviously, their potential for magnetic field diagnostics is very limited. What we really need are continuous diagnostics of corona magnetic field in different parts of the corona structure. And this could be achieved if we apply magnetic seismology to more ubiquitous and continuous observations of waves in the corona. So, so here, uh, we use the ubiquitous propagating kink waves observed by comp instrument, like the one showed in the right movie. So this is the waves we used for our uh, measurement for the corona magnetic field. Comp is a coronagraph with a 20 centimeter aperture Using the IR13-1074 and 1079 nanometer infrared spectrons, it can observe the solar corona in the range of about 1.05 to 1.35 solar radius. And it can do imaging spectroscopy and spectropolarimetry. Basically, COMP takes images of each polarization state at several wavelength positions across the corona spectronon profile, and we can obtain the spectral parameters such as the peak intensity and the Doppler velocity from this. Here, this movie shows the Doppler shift image sequence observed, observed using our comp observation. We can clearly see these propagating Doppler shift fluctuations that are almost everywhere in the field view. Since the Doppler shift refers to the motion along the line of sight, and the magnetic field lines in the off-limb corona are largely perpendicular to the line of sight. These disturbances are essentially signatures of transverse waves. Because transverse waves are propagating along the field lines and oscillating perpendicular to the field direction. So these transverse waves, they are most likely kink waves. The fixed speed of kink waves is given as this equation here in the white color. However, in the solar corona, because of the low plasma beta, 
we can assume that the magnetic field stress inside and on the side of the flux tube is basically the same. And because of the spatial resolution of comp, an uh, individual flux tubes is unlikely to be uh, resolved. So the density we get should be an average value inside and outside flux tubes within each pixel. Under such conditions, the original phase speed is simplified as the orange colored one. From this simple expression, we can see that if we can measure the phase speed of these waves and the density in the corona, we can immediately obtain the corona magnetic field stress. To obtain the phase speed, we apply the wave tracking technique to the entire field view. This allows us to track the propagating of these waves and also calculate their directions. Because the kink waves propagate along the magnetic field lines, the wave propagating angle is essentially the plane of sky orientation of the corona magnetic field. So we have measured the plane of sky direction of the magnetic field in the global corona using actual corona observations. And based on the propagation direction, we can further calculate the wave propagation speed, that is the phase speed of these waves. The computed phase speed mostly falls in the range of about 300 to 700 kilometers per second. These are the typical values in the solar corona. Now that we have already got the phase speed, we need to, to calculate the election the corona density. This is done based on the ratio of these two ion three lines. Their line ratio is sensitive to electron density. And we use the Chianti database to calculate the theoretical relationship between the line ratio and the electron density, considering both electron collision excitation and the photon excitation. The theoretical curves are shown in the left. And Using this curve and combine the, combine the observation with comp, we can get the electron density in the entire field of view. The red figure is a derived electron density map. Based on the results from wave tracking and density diagnostics, we already have the phase speed and corona density. Now we, we can use this simple equation to map the magnetic field in the corona. The measured phase speed should be the kink speed projected onto the plane of sky. We can further approximate that the average density in the vicinity of the plane of sky with the derived density. This is a reasonable approximation because our measurements are based on the spectral profiles that result from an integration of spectral line emissivity. Since the emissivity increases with density, and the density generally decreases with distance from the solar limb. So the nile site weighting will favor magnetic structures in the vicinity of the plane of sky. Further simulations of propagating kink waves have also demonstrated that this is an appropriate approximation. By substituting the derived phase speed and density to this equation, we can easily calculate that the plane of sky component of the magnetic field strength. The typical values of the magnetic field strength in the field view are about 1 to 5 Gauss. For now, COMP has already been upgraded to UCOMP. UCOMP has a better spatial resolution, an improved data quality, and a larger field view. With UCOMP, apply this, the similar magnetoseismology method, we have obtained about 16 corona magnetic field maps within a solar rotation period. This means that UCOM has the ability to do routine measurements for the corona magnetic field. So in summary, using UCOM, using COMP and the UCOM observations, we have determined the spatial distribution of the plasma density in the corona and also the phase speed of these prevailing transverse waves in the, in the plasma. Combining these, we have measured the global corona magnetic fields for the first time. 
the derived field strength in the corona from the 1.05 to 1.35 solar radii are mostly 1 to 4 Gauss. These results demonstrate the capability of imaging spectroscopy in corona magnetic field diagnostics. With this technique and using the upgraded COM instrument, global corona magnetic field maps could in principle be routinely obtained. This will fill in the missing part of the environments of the sun's global magnetism. Thank you.